leftovers, or the DMV, or house cleaning, or Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. We're prohibited by law. T plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, I'm Dave Eagleman. I have a new podcast called Inner Cosmos on iHeart. I'm going to explore the relationship between our brains and our experiences by tackling unusual questions like, can we create new senses for humans? So join me weekly to uncover how your brain steers your behavior, your perception, and your reality. Listen to Inner Cosmos with David Eagleman on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You're listening to 100 Words or Less with Ray Harkins. Hello all, it's that most wonderful time of the year which myself, my good friends Joey Cahill and Jeremy Bohm all get together and we share for the first time our lists, our best records of the year, top 10. And we've been doing this on this particular podcast for the better part of 10 years, so if you want to dive back into the archives, you can find all of those <laughs> lists And uh, we've also been doing this for many, many years, just in our own personal lives, because we are big nerds and we love to talk about music. And honestly, the most positive feedback I receive on these episodes is the fact that I found out about a new favorite band. I found out that a band that I've been paying attention to released a new record and I wasn't aware of that. I love to get that feedback. And honestly, I, this is probably one of my most anticipated episodes of the year because, I mean, let's be honest, I only tease out the guests week to week. So it's not like anybody can anticipate those. But this is a really, really fun and special episode. And uh, we talk for the better part of, I don't know, hour and 45 minutes on this thing. So uh, strap in, pull up a uh, chair, pour a cup of coffee, you know, get your favorite seltzer, whatever it is you were doing when you listen to this podcast. And uh, I have to thank you, the listener, for riding along in this awesome journey in regards to this podcast. I've had many, many discussions with people who I never thought I would connect with on a personal level and talk to people whose music and art I respect. And it's been a very, very fun experience and frankly has changed my life in a lot of different ways. And uh, I love you, the listener, for that, for downloading it, sharing it talking about it, whatever it is, the support I want you to be aware of, that it is it is not lost on me. And I really genuinely do appreciate it. And I appreciate all the sponsors, everybody from Rockabilia to Evil Greed and all the record labels that have supported this podcast. I know this is the time of the year where you get like reflective, but uh, I, I, I truly, truly do appreciate it. And it's, uh, it's awesome. And I will continue to do this until I can't. <laughs> and so you're, you're going to be along for the ride. And I appreciate that. But, um, anyways, you can always email the show 100 words podcast at gmail.com if you want to tell me what your favorite records are, why we're wrong, whatever it is. That email address is always open. You can also please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can write some words and leave a review like that. I do pay attention to those as well as the star rating. Same thing could be said on Spotify, except without the uh, you know written review aspect of it. So here is my discussion with Joey and Jeremy and myself. And a uh, little disclaimer: uh, Joey's kid definitely makes a uh, you know guest appearance in this podcast on uh, more than one occasion. And uh, there were parts I edited out, and there were parts I just left in because it was cute and charming, and we live real lives. So um, yeah, that's that's just what I decided to do. So shout out to Joey's kid. And um, yeah, here's our best records of 2022. A one little programming note as well. If you want to make it very easy for yourself to access all of these records, I will have a Spotify playlist in the show notes, as well as links to some other cool things that you can get into, whether it's subscribing to our YouTube channel uh, or yeah, I've got a few shirts left. If you're looking for, you know, something cool to come out in the new year and be like, yo, I got a hundred words podcast shirt. Anyways, 
want to make that easy for you. So dive into the show notes and you will be able to see a Spotify playlist of all of our records and you can check it all out there. So gentlemen, we're here again at our annual best of list 2022 this year more than ever i'm not gonna lie maybe it was just because like shows are back and i've been to more shows recently but it was probably at least once or twice a show a person would come up to me and say hey when are you posting the year episode and this was like starting in early november and i'm like okay like calm down so i don't know it was very people are anticipating this in ways that uh, i haven't experienced before in the past so way to go guys we've we've built we built something special here (laughs) Well, well, that's exciting. 12 years. <laughs> I, listen, I guess, I guess, you know, us posting on our MySpace blogs wasn't that important at that time. No. no. It was a revolution, though. You, know? <laughs> you can plant a seed and watch it grow, and it takes 12 plus years to, you know, make it into something meaningful for some people. But yeah. Well, I mean, we did invent the year end lists, you Absolutely. know, the three of us. Yeah, of course. It was us. Uh, very, yeah. Basically. I mean, yeah, before. Yeah. Before Rolling Stone even existed, we obviously were doing. I mean, but they they just did a terrible version of it. You know, they did a coffee table books. We're Dork. like talking about it and publishing it on the internet. <laughs> so much more exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I always like to find out about how your guys' musical uh, listening patterns have changed and or not changed. Uh, obviously, Jeremy, with you being on the road more, and I know that you are uh, beholden to many of your band members for music choices in the van and, or you just put on headphones. So what's your, uh, what's your musical year look like? God, I feel like I've been saying the same thing for these past bunch of years, but like, I, you know, I, uh, I still really just dive into records once I have it on vinyl. There's a few records that came out this year that I don't have on vinyl yet because maybe they're just not out on vinyl yet, or it just haven't arrived. Um, or, you know, this, that, or the other thing. Um, as far as listening, you know what? I, I actually fell in love with a a specific podcast this, this last whole bunch of touring. So I pretty much only listened to that while, while while I drove. I don't, I didn't really even take in too much music while I drove, uh, this year. Shout out, shout out the podcast. What's the podcast? uh, Have you guys listened to that, uh, 60 songs that explain the nineties podcast with with Rob Hyla? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it had existed for a long time. And then um, I just finally dove in like a, like, you know, a few months, like a month and a half back when he, uh, he posted like a Pantera walk episode and, I, and it was with like Sean fantasy. So I was like, okay, I'm curious to hear that fantasy talking about Pantera. Exactly. <laughs> my thoughts. Exactly. My friend. That's why I was like, I need to hear this. And then that made me go to episode one, which was Alanis Morris that you ought to know. And it's just like from there. And it's like great because there's a lot of episodes that like are of songs that I'm obviously aware of, but like have no emotional connection to. But it ends up still being like a really thrilling episode to like learn about stuff like the Brandy and Monica episode. For, you know, it's oh, like, what a I, song. Yeah, yeah sure. Sure. But like, I didn't know all this stuff that like the behind the scenes of it and the history of it. So like, I don't know. Uh, that was pretty much what I mainly listened to. Uh, aside from like, you know, now and again, like a new a band will put up a new song and I'll and I'll check that out or something like that. Um, but that's mostly what I did. So I have a terrible answer for you, Ray. So I apologize. That's uh, that, that's that's my habits. That is the honest truth. I would rather get that from you than just being like, oh yeah, you know, like I've, uh, this is how I do the thing. So yeah, I, I, I should also mention that I still haven't done my Spotify Wrapped because I feel weird about people doing it in like November. I'm like, we have one more month left. Like you don't really get the full year look yet. <laughs> I'm not to like, yeah, you guys shit if you guys both did yours, but like, I I just, I think that like OCD person in me was like, but we still got one more month. (laughs) I, 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 the only thing, well, there's two things about Spotify rap that I I find. I, I I actually appreciate that people don't share it as much partially because I think people feel guilty by the fact that they're like, Oh, here's how much money I've stolen from artists. Like, you know, and I, I was only curious personally about how much time I spent. Cause I feel like that's such an interesting metric. And so that was the only reason that I, I dipped into it. I was like, I don't care that you tell me that, you know, this is my most listened to song because that's the song that my son demanded. We listen to 455,000 times like Joey, right. I'm sure is very well familiar with. Well, now we just listen to rap music because Everett loves rap. 
So, Whoa! Like what sort of what sort of rap are we talking about? Oh, it's not, this is poor parent age appropriate. No, he's a big fan of uh, Dr. Dre, um, Pusha T. Um, okay, what else do we listen to? We listen to a lot of um, Juice World. Um, oh, I, I couldn't tell you what Juice World sounds like, Joey. So uh, I've never listened to one song. Um, there's a song he did with Marshmallow called "Bye Bye." Pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, you know, he's got Warren G. Regulator on his playlist. Um, it's awesome that he that he likes the '90s stuff. But then he also likes like Travis Scott and yeah, for sure. Like, but, a lot but of, like, like that- more like the the TikTok Fortnite stuff. Totally. Like, but so, I mean, but, I guess but then I'll be like, no, but listen to Tribe Called Quest and be like, oh, this is good. Oh, right, right, right. Like that's cool that like that it doesn't matter if something sounds maybe you know not to say that stuff sounds dated but it does sonically sound from a different era different. yeah yeah that's awesome um so what so how how was your i mean obviously you shout out to the want to hear it record store celebrating its two <laughs> years in existence so you i know listen to music at the store but then I how mean, does how is that all transpire um i listen to music at the store <laughs> <laughs> i don't, sure like i a lot of times I, I don't listen to music at home very often anymore because it's like when I'm at the store all day, I listen to music for like nine hours straight. Even if it's like Justin's there, like if someone else is there, I kind of let them bully the jukebox and do whatever. But even like stuff that I just don't want to listen to music after being there all day. So I listen to podcasts when I'm driving and at home, sometimes my record, we moved all my records and record player to the basement. So like ever, I'll go to the basement and listen to records and, play video games and like put on records. Down. Your man cave. That's your man cave. No, I mean, it's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. You're just like Everett, let's go, let's go get away from the women. Let's go, let's go listen oh, we, to some records and we, play some we game, video a games. We big comfy couch and like a, Hell yeah. a, a big TV. So we, we have like movie nights down there, family movie nights. And, but yeah, yeah. But for the most part, just listening to the music at the store, we find now that we have a bigger space, I finally was able to fit a record player. So like we actually listen to records sometimes. And um, when I, when I, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting the new location for your shop, uh, just like what a month and a half yeah. or a month ago or something. And uh, I was appreciating that the music that you guys were playing just seemed to, like, I have a feeling you just typed in eighties hits. Cause it was just like all, you know, it was, it, I feel like it was like Duran Duran. Who, who uh, was there? Doug was there. Uh, Doug was there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Doug just plays. 80s hits. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has like I a playlist that he just plays, and it's like the best hits. I mean, it's very different when I'm playing music. Sure. Uh, but I also like, to me, it felt like had you put that on, it's like a perfect thing of like, I don't want to have to think about what to put on. And, and you can guess that at least 75% of these songs I like. Oh, yeah. And I've got like, I have... I made like a, a record store day playlist where it's like, it's busy. Like, let's just not play like death metal all day. Yeah. And, and it's just like a mix of everything. Like everyone kind of chipped in on, like chimed in on like songs and it's like, there's such an easy, like just put that on. And it's, yeah. You know, just, just like the uh, great records that we all used to put on at the record stores. We respectively worked at where it's like, what can everybody agree on? How about a perfect circle? Uh, how about, uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, try to think of some of the other records that everybody always used to play and was like, okay with like where you wouldn't bum anybody out, not only from a customer perspective, but then the, your other coworkers. Although when, when Craig would put on Bob Marley at the quietest volume, um, that was torture. <laughs> That's not a good vibe. No, and then no when, not at when all. Punks would come in about two minutes at till closing. I would just put on mineral really loud. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's perfect. Right. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the the record that no one else in the store was aware, like the band no one else in the store was aware of uh, when I first started playing it, but everybody in, in pretty quickly like was fine with was uh, Dear Catastrophe Waitress from Bell and Sebastian. That was like mm. a standard go-to because it's like not abrasive. It's not offensive. It's just like easy background music for most people. You know? right. Rival Schools was also, that just triggered oh, that a memory sounds- where I was like, dude, yeah, United by Fate. It was like, put it on. Cool. All right. You want to listen to that again? Sure. Let's play it back. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. and Brandon Porter had a lot of crossover. Brandon Wirtz, less, 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 less crossover there. Just, but like Rock from the Crypt was always. I was about to say, just put Rock from the Crypt yeah, on your like, mind. That was a, a very safe, right? Like a safe go to. 
Yeah. Well, let's dive into our lists. And uh, I'm just going to randomly pick, and then we'll obviously ping pong back and get confused at the end of every single round because that's what we do. Whose turn is it? Yeah, exactly. Whose turn is it? Yeah. And for those of you that are not straight edge, which are a majority of you people, uh, you can take a drink every single time that we say that. (laughs) So, Joey, how about your number 10 record of the year? Funny that the last thing I mentioned was Rock from the Crypt. Because my number 10 is Swami John Reese, Ride the Wild Night. Um, I thought you were going to say the plosives record. That's, the, that's what the I thought thing. you were going for. I go, I lean John Reese more than his bands with other people. Like, I was always Sultans over Hot Snakes. I mean, Rocket's always my number one. Like, I like, I like all the other bands, but he's like, he's my guy. And this record to me is the key ingredient. Yes. Like his voice and his, re- this record to me sounds more like the Sultans, which if he's listening, uh, please press shipwrecked on vinyl. I don't know why it's, or put it on Spotify at the very least. Like Jesus Christ, the record rules. Let me listen to the record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it came out a while ago and it was on my, like, you know, I make a list throughout the year. And this past week I was just like revisiting stuff. And I was like, "Oh yeah, the, this record, this record rules," and so it it slid into number ten, knocked some other stuff off, and I'm, I'm glad it's there. I yeah, big rock. He put that. he put that out himself, it's on, correct? It's on Swami, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. sir, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, like the plosives record school, but I this is where I this is where I land. Yeah, that I, I follow your logic, and I just I. I honestly didn't really spend that much time with that record. I probably should have, but I just, if I were to head to head battle those, just the plosives I mean, one, it's going to blow your me. mind. It sounds like a John Reese band. No but it's a solo record. Um, it, it's yeah, it's great. Um, awesome. I didn't even know of this thing existing. That's it came not, out in out of March. Okay. March ish. Yeah. Or er, earlier in the year. Uh, yeah. Because the Plosives record came out, I th- well, I want to say it was around April or May. I could be wrong in that. But it would se- it seemed like they came around Pretty roughly slow. at the same time, which is like, I mean, it, clearly they don't care because they're just not like, they're like, we're not really a part of the music industry. Yeah. We'll just do whatever the hell we want. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. John Reese, number 10. Okay. Jeremy. You're- okay. Uh, following uh, the band I mentioned moments ago, my number 10 is Bell and Sebastian's newest record, A Bit of Previous. Um, I feel like I've probably said this on this exact show the last times Bell and Sebastian has released music, but uh, I can always count on them to have a handful of very good songs amongst a record that is mostly fine. Um, but because they are an all-time top five favorite band for me, I'm always going to I'm going to be buying it. There's multiple covers of this record, so I'm an idiot and at least got like two of the variant covers or whatever for vinyl. Um, but yeah, they've always been one of my favorite bands. There's some really solid songs, uh, especially on side A. It's uh, it's pretty front loaded, I'll say that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I you know I appreciate that they're still a band that they're still churning out good music. And uh, so yeah, shout out Bell and Sebastian, my number ten. Uh, See, they, I think that they, leads. Go ahead. I was going to say, they, 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 they know what they're doing. I honestly did. I listened to the record once and I was like, this is cool. And it just, it didn't capture me to re-listen. Not because it was bad, but yeah. Joey, did you listen to this record at all? I didn't. That's fine. I think I listened yeah. to like, I, the one of the first singles, I watched a video and I was like, oh, it's cool. It sounds like Bell and Sebastian. And then. Yeah. I there's some really like, good songs. the only song I'll really like. And then I never went back. Yeah. There's some really good songs on, on, uh, on side A. Uh, I'll say that. Um. And uh, maybe it's just because I didn't fully love uh, the songs on side B immediately. I didn't like come back to them a lot. But anyway, I'm always going to be there. I love this band. So. Yeah. It's like anytime. Yeah. Anytime they put out new material, it's like, all right, I, I, I will obviously listen. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big love for them. Uh, Ray, what's your number 10? My number 10 is the Brutus record. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that band. Yeah. Because Unison I- Life. What's that? I say only because I work at a record store. Right. Yeah. I, so I had heard of their name and I listened to them kind of in the past. Um, but this rec, I just like came out the gates and I was like, holy crap. Like dudes, if I'm not mistaken, they're a three piece from what I could tell. I've never seen them live. Uh, drummer sings 
And uh, she also has wind chimes next to her when she plays, which I think is incredibly sick. <laughs> and so she does like, and I think that's really funny. Um, but uh, yeah, they put out this record on, they've been working with Sergeant House for the past, I don't know, two or three records. And I, um, you'll there, there's a certain theme as my list unfolds of certain bands that you feel like they have gotten to, to borrow a phrase from your podcast, Jeremy, when did you feel like you got, you know, you actually did the thing that you were trying to do for so Mm -hmm. long. And that's what I think. It's like, you listen to this Brutus record and you're like, that's what you guys have been putting together in some way, shape or form. So it's, I mean, it's aggressive, it's catchy. It's uh, definitely artistic. It's not one of those records where you just toss it on for some easy listening. It's like, all right, there's a lot going on here. Uh, But it just, it, it really captured me. And so that's why, this snuck on there. It was actually between this or I really liked that anxious record, little green house. The only thing about that record, it came out in January and that feels like 450 <laughs> years ago. So I just couldn't, I was like, ah, I really haven't listened to that record in the past, like six months that hard. So uh, that's where Brutus releasing in October was able to sneak in at that number 10 spot. So fair enough. Uh, yeah. I haven't checked out this record. We played, I was going to say, you probably had to have played a fest with them. Yeah, we played a fest with them um, in, I want to say it was in Portugal with, uh, with, on that Deaf Heaven tour in 2019. And, and uh, they were awesome. Um, But uh, yeah, I need to check it, check this record out. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, uh, I will do my number nine. My number Mm -hmm. nine record is Birds in Row, Gris Klein. And I will, uh, you know, pour some more sugar on you, Jeremy. I listened to the interview that you did with the vocalist. And I've always liked Birds in Row, but they've never been a band that's like, oh my gosh, like I ride so hard for them. Like never, I actually have never seen them live. Hmm. This record, very much like Brutus, where it was like, after listening to honestly that interview that you did with him and then spending a lot of time with the record and then partially too, because I know that they released this on... Red Creek, which is the singer of Cult of Luna's record label. Um, There's just a lot of connections where I was like, okay, I'm going to spend a lot of time with this. And God, dude, it just, it, it again, feels like everything that they've been trying to do in one record. And it feels so uh, urgent, you know, are like melodic, artistic, like whatever adjective you want to put on. That's like, you know, boundary breaking, whatever. <laughs> I just like, I love the record so much in ways that I was honestly shocked because I was always just sort of, mid on them and not in a bad way just in a eh, okay they're a band so that is the birds in row gris klein is that how you say it i don't know I've yeah yeah, yeah okay uh, i will be speaking more about this record <laughs> uh in a, in a little bit but uh yeah no i'll just i'll save my stuff for it but yeah this band they're they're just so fucking good yeah i couldn't believe it I couldn't is there any it. sign of because i I feel, you know, like I don't have this record on vinyl. I don't even know if the vinyl has shipped yet, but it was, you know, that's the we one. You have downside. it at the store. So like you it, do. It, it It's out there. Okay. Yeah. It, se- it seems like it's been very difficult to obtain for your average consumer on the internet, it's been but like, like record stores. Yeah. I mean, this is, well, cause yeah, know. there's no U.S. distribution for I'll it say it's as like, far as I know. This is, you know, nerd record store talking. It's like one stops only really that I've seen it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's expensive for your shop too. It's probably like I mean, 35 bucks or something. I don't, I think it may be like, no, it's, it wasn't too terrible for an import. Okay. It wasn't bad. Um, okay. But yeah, like, Got it. but it's been tough to find and they'll get like two. I'm like, well, I'm just going to get both right. of these. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I definitely, yeah. When we were just overseas, like every record store that I went to, I went in looking for that. But then after a while I was like, I just maybe think that this isn't, done yet or like by the time or maybe by the time i left europe it has now shipped to stores or something like that because i didn't even see it in your store when i was there so it had to have been after that when it shipped probably yeah who yeah. knows <laughs> well that was my number nine record uh i'm gonna toss it over to you jeremy we'll just re-snake it back rockabilia is a longtime partner of the show and i love them very much And I think you will love what they do, because if you have not visited their website after me talking about this for the better part of a couple years, you need to do that, because I will give you a 10% discount by using the promo code 100 words or less that gets you 
an exclusive offer, and it's awesome to see because you can buy, let me just list some of the bands. This shows you how wide of a variety they have. They got Led Zeppelin, Five Finger Death Punch, Guns N' Roses, Red Hot Chili Peppers, ACDC. The cool thing about this is this is all officially licensed stuff. So that means the bands get paid. None of this horrible bootleg stuff or like, you know, 45 licensors later than maybe the band sees like, you know, four cents or whatever. This is the real deal. It's awesome stuff. They work out of the Midwest. They ship it to you quick. You can find, you know, let's be honest. I mean, it's it's pretty late in the game in order to get a gift. But at the same time, you can for sure come out guns blazing in the new year with a bunch of new merch for your family, your friends, or yourself. Again, use the promo code 100 words or less, 10% off for listeners of this very podcast, and it lets them know that you heard about it via this show. So thank you very much, Rockabilia. Go to rockabilia.com. Promo code 100 words or less, 10% off. Enjoy. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Trust me in saying that therapy is an incredible tool for as you are traveling through life. Because who you are as a person, you know, five or 10 years ago is maybe a completely different version of yourself because we run into challenges, whether it's work, whether it's life stuff, relationships, all of those things you can work through with a therapist, and that is why I love BetterHelp and what they do. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire, and then you get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Ray to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Ray. Dip in, give therapy a try, and become a better person. Sure. Uh, My number nine record is uh, the Alex G record, uh, God Save the Animals. Um, I have just very much enjoyed everything this this uh this artist has done uh for the last ton of years um i came in late to him like by the time i got into him it was the run for cover record rocket and he had already previously had like four records out or three records or something plus a ton of singles um and so i got into that record and then i've kind of you know uh got into everything he's done since then like you know quite a lot and uh it's become sort of this it's sort of just this specific sound that is just really enjoyable to say walk your dog to or something i don't know it's uh he also just recently did uh the soundtrack for uh this movie called um fuck what is it uh we're all going to the world's fair uh i think it was a record store day 12 you know like 12 inch but it was like out of 900 i saw it one store on record store day or whatever and it was like fucking 40 dollars you got one copy yeah yeah i was just like okay this thing is like sorry not for me kid yeah it's like i I was like one of those things where i was like hey i would really like to have this but uh that's really expensive for a single jacket no frills uh lp but it's record store day yeah i I love i i and i'm sure that that just reminds me it's one of those things like obviously as we get older not only like with records but merch and stuff like that where we like there is a certain breaking point for people like us who are just like, dude, I can't buy a short sleeve t-shirt for $35 or I can't like, or whatever. Or, like, I can't buy a single LP. Like, cause we just know too much about like, well, we know how much this actually costs. Yeah. yeah like it, it's, it's tough. Like, um, yeah. Like with that, I mean, I remember feeling that way right out the gate a while ago once like major labels got really interested in vinyl. Um, you know, this is probably 10 years ago, whatever, but when they had repressed Dookie and it was just like a single jacket, no frills thing. And it was like twenty nine ninety nine, And I was just like, Oh, come on. Um, but, uh, but now that just seems to be the norm. Oh, for, it's, yeah. It's, right. Of course. And you know, I never, I never blame retailers for that. It's like, well, record store day sometimes you can blame retailers a little bit because sometimes you see this like oh you're supposed to add only x amount percent but you're adding like a hundred percent on top of this pisses me off oh yeah, it's the worst it's yeah. tough but anyway uh back to this record um it's really great uh they performed on um God, what was it? i think it was letterman recently uh and did like a really cool rendition of one of the tracks on it i think it's miracle um and it was just lovely so 
Uh, shout out Alex G. Um, you took our uh, tour manager Calbert from us, <laughs> and I hope you're enjoying. Is it with Alex company. G. Now? God damn. He's been yeah. He's been That's Alex awesome. G's guy for like fucking a year and a half or some or two years or something nice yeah like good for you good for you cal uh (laughs) hard hard to keep good help sometimes you know we miss you we miss you uh all right joey what's your number nine uh my number nine is long knife curb stomp earth like every year i have to have my one like no i still like punk and hardcore (laughs) look at me and this is that record for this year um it kind of sounds like all the ones from the last couple of years, like bootlicker, um, chisel a little, not as oi as chisel, but, um, or that chisel, not chisel, um, warthog kind of like just fast. Um, there's, but there's moments that kind of sound like rock from the crypt. Like interesting. And like, I haven't heard this band. Um, yeah, neither did I, I. Got the LP on beach impediment in the States. They're from Portland. Oh, okay. Um, but, and then the singer kind of sounds like Damien from fucked up. Um, I don't know the record rules. It's just, you know, awesome. a fast punk record and it's called curb stomp earth. And I think that name is hard. It is hard. And, yeah. look, look, I just pulled up the art and I was like, Oh, that's, it looks like that looks like a horror movie cover. Yeah, I'm like, does, this is right? cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. No, it looks the, like the gate. The gate. We have, if you remember that film, oh, yeah. wow. Interested that in the gate look- soundtrack, please uh, shop at one here at records in Watertown, Massachusetts. Um, I feel like that's like almost like a throw out to uh, like a, like a shout out to the gate. And it's totally. Really that looks like a total homage. Yeah. It's just like, here we go. Yeah. But that's cool. I like yeah, it. I, I like for, you know, I, it's one of those records. Where of course it's not like reinventing the wheel, but like, there's just like little elements. There's a song called uncle Phil where it's like, Oh, I see you're doing something different here. Okay. Um, it's shout, shout out, shout out to the fresh Prince of Bel Air. So yeah. they're all right. Yeah, Phil. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well i i know i myself always appreciate those uh either uk slash you know punk adjacent or fully punk recommendations that you uh you throw out there so this yeah is, this good. is the one that really stuck with me all, all year long um hell yeah yeah um, and you said they're from portland oregon yes okay or portland maine <laughs> PDX is Portland, Oregon, I believe. That's that's Portland. Yes, okay. that is that's that opposite is. Opposite from Portland, I know that. Never had a doubt. <laughs> um, all right, so my number eight um, hashtag nepotism is Dream Unending Song of Salvation, um, a record that uh, it, I will admittedly my brother in law sings and plays drums in, that I probably never would have listened to had he not been in it. Um, but it this record like blew me away. Um, he, they put out a record last year that was pretty good. And then this one, it's it's like a world I know nothing about. So I'm just kind of topping, talking out of my ass a little. But it's like doomy, like heavy metal. But there's something about it that like, and I tell Justin this all the time. It's like, it's almost relaxing in a way. Like the guitars, there's there's so much like melody and um, it's just like a really pretty metal record. And then Justin's like, you know, death metal vocals over it. But there's just, I don't know, it like, I listen to it in the shop all the time and all kinds of people are like, what is this? And it's like, you know, got Pitchfork Best New Music. So it's like, it's this weird, like, beautiful death metal record that appeals to, I guess, a lot, all kinds of people. Um, but yeah, it, it's great. Um, I don't know who to compare it to because... Sure. I think a lot of a lot. I, I agree. I mean, I, I listened to the record and sure. I enjoyed it more than the last one. I mean, I think like if this came out in the you know early '90s boom with bands like you know Cathedral and Entombed, not that they sounded. I mean, Cathedral, yes, but like that whole when major labels were like, "There's money to be made in the <laughs> metal hills," like Dream on Ending would have absolutely done that, and then you know like been whatever lauded in the same respects as like, you know, catatonian dark tranquility and all those type of bands, even though again, they don't sound like them, yeah. but yeah, I it's, it, it is interesting to your point where it's like, this record has seemed to have capture a lot of people's attention that don't identify as metal listeners well, at all. It would made like stereo gums top 50 records of the year. Like, I mean, it's like popping up on these lists where it's like, or Brooklyn vegans, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> But think I mean, it's like, like do, it's like doing the thing that like the Deaf Heaven records did, where it's like it's it's got mass appeal without it seemingly 
uh, trying to be mass appeal. Knowing for a complete fact that Justin has no idea. Like, oh, right. He's not trying what to press appeal. is right. Like he doesn't, he's not trying to appeal to like, he doesn't care. No, totally. And it's like, but yeah, I mean the record, like the record's awesome. Um, I, yeah, really like it. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Dream on ending. Jeremy, you can do the number nine. You, we can just, we can just keep We're this snake going back and forth. No one's drinking tonight, boys. Nope. Sorry. We just, we solved the problem a couple years in guys. We're so smart. <laughs> it's, I think it's number eight though, right? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Drink up. <laughs> it is number eight. Ah, damn it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, okay. In the same similar vein as your choice, uh, Joey, uh, my number eight is the mama record. <laughs> Uh, the polyvinyl uh yeah i think so um yeah my my joke is just that it's not it's not a death metal band it's, uh, no, yeah. I, was, I, I thought i thought it was more the familial connection and i was uh, like no 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 no, no. Ma, i was like what <laughs> uh yeah it's the mama record household name um that did come out on Pony. i think it's polyvinyl right i think so yeah uh i'm checking that um there's a van on the cover i believe yeah, 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 yep. It was polyvinyl. Yeah, there I you know. go. Uh, write it down. Yeah, that's also showing. I think maybe my brain these days, where like that stuff used to be so present in my brain on who put out <laughs> records anymore, and it might be to the bigger conversation that record labels don't matter anymore <laughs> um, at all. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys check this record out, listen to this record, or anything like that. Um, but it is so good. Uh, I. You know, you hear a lot of bands trying to do the 90s thing, which I appreciate. And I like, you know, like the trying to sound like a 90s alt rock band. But this sounds, uh, aside from how incredible the production on this record is, this sounds straight out of 1993. Like this might as well be Veruca Salt B-Sides. God damn uh, it. I feel like I should have listened to this record. It's wow, really, yeah. really good. It's I really, really missed good. this completely. Yeah, it didn't. And I've been listening to a lot of Ruby Salt lately, so I'm very oh my intrigued. God. Joey, this is this is for you. This is for you then, for sure. Uh, yeah, it just, it's a very enjoyable listen. The songs are extremely hooky. Um, th- you know, I will say with my list, you could just kind of like scat. You could, you could just kind of go in. You could switch the order of these all around. Like I don't have any sort of like dramatic, like this has to be number three. This has to be number six. Like most of these aside from my big feelings about the bell and Sebastian record, I just really love all of these records uh, pretty equally. Um, so right, yeah. the hierarchy isn't that. It's, yeah. It's, not, it's yeah. not that important. Truthfully. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, check out this mama record if you haven't yet. And it's M O M M A. Uh, not M A M A or something. Yeah. That'll Australian? get you a different result. What's that? Are they Australian? I don't think so. I just assume uh, everything's from Australia. Anything but, that you like is is Australian. I think. <laughs> it's um, like if they are catchy, and then there are uh, you know there's some uh, there's females in the band. Then yeah, I, they have to be from New Zealand or uh, Australia. Just uh, they are from oh my goodness gracious now here's something i did not know guess where this band is from los angeles los angeles <laughs> wow. it, it, and it's so it is so funny too because like to your point about record labels and like i often have discussions about this just you know i mean with old people like ourselves where it's like it's so interesting that you know there's really no sonic similarities to bands in certain areas. Like the, it doesn't matter anymore. Obviously you could be anywhere and play in a band together. It's not like there's a particular Louisville sound. I mean, there is to a little bit of an extent, but you know, and maybe you could argue some DC stuff, but it's so hard to pinpoint bands and be like, Oh, they're probably from here. Oh no. They're from the whole other side of the world. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's very true, especially with, you know, how accessible every sound is and people having garage band. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's totally it, yeah. uh, very rarely are, is there a signature sound uh, anymore for, you know, but this is me speaking only on the genres I'm really familiar with. So yeah. it's, not a, it's not a hard quote for me. Yeah, don't, um, don't, don't add him. Don't add him. Yeah, don't. Come on. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh Ray, what is your number eight? Well, I realized, Joey, we completely, because you should have done your number eight, right? He did. He did. That was the dream on ending. Long Knife was number nine. Dream on ending was number oh, eight. Oh, that's right. Thanks, Now guys. Ray has to drink oh, Ray, twice. Are, are, did you come into this room? Did you break edge just I, 
I may or may not have. I'm not going to tell you guys. I've just been drinking vodka out of this water bottle. Because, I mean, nothing says like a good, you know. You guys, is that a statue sticker? Of course, it's a, of course it's a statue sticker. Yeah, hey, hell water yeah. bottle looks like a bong. Yeah. I'm just saying it. I'm just Dude, saying there's a lot of edge watch going on on Ray right there, now. There's a, uh, you know, this is an old Nalgene bottle. What can I say, guys? Maybe I do a little of this, a little of that out of there. Anyways, the my number eight record, uh, very uh, connected to the number nine record, the Birds and Row record, is the new Cult of Lunar record called Long Road North. Uh, the band, so they're more, I mean, they've always been c- cinematic because obviously like long, sprawling songs, you know, a lot of, a lot of layers on top of it. But they're, uh, on this record, they actually worked with a composer. I don't know if he actually lives in the same town, but he's the dude who did the Hereditary soundtrack and also oh, just cool. did the uh, the menu. He did that soundtrack was a, a composer named Colin something or other. I can't remember his last name. but uh, And also the singer, Johannes, he is like a director over in Sweden. And he's been like... So anyways, there's just a lot of stuff going on here <laughs> that has influenced Cult of Luna in a real way. And I just love the fact that this band has existed for over 20 years, is on like like their seventh LP, not even including a bunch of EPs and stuff like that. And they're releasing some of their best music and are arguably more popular than they ever have been, not only in Europe, but then whenever they come over to America, it's like, I, I just will never forget, this was the last show before the pandemic that I went to. And I was like, damn, they pretty much almost sold out the Fonda. And it's like, that's huge for them when, you know, many, many years ago, we saw them at Chain Reaction in front of 40 people or whatever. Did they <laughs> on, so, were they on your list last year? They were on my list. Thank you. They were on my list last year for an EP that they put yeah, out. I that feel was, like... I know. Like, this is all... I'm like having like deja vu. Okay. <laughs> you, you're very correct because I had to double check myself as well. I was like, did I put that EP last year? I'm like, oh, damn, I did. Yeah, so... But I, I did it because I was like, this is 37 minutes long, guys. And like this LP, as you can imagine, is 67 minutes or something like that. So, but uh, it would be a great entry point, like to listen to Cult of Luna if you've never listened to them before. And it'll give you a really good representation of what the band is. And then you can obviously go back from there. But yeah, Cult of Luna, Long Road North, great band, great record. Hell yeah. I will do my number seven. And that is, I, I love Pine Grove so much and uh, their new record, 1111. I, uh, yeah, I just, they're like, to me, they're the perfect blend of like weaker than Sufjan Stevens, like, you know, sort of twee, but at the same time, like very earnest in their approach. I, um, I still have yet to see them, but a lot of people that I trust their musical opinion have seen them and say great things about them. Uh, I just think that this record was a, another great entry. Nothing that completely blew the lid off what they've done previously, but their vocal melodies, like I, it's just, and you guys know that feeling when like you listen to a vocal melody and you're just like, how the hell did you come up with that? Like, that's so sick. Like I can't, that's, it's just so creative and inventive. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love the Pine Grove record. Did you guys listen to that? I did, did not. not. No. You've really done it for me. But that's okay. Yeah. I, you just, I mean, you just, obviously you just don't like the weaker thans either. I'm just kidding. That's, so, <laughs> that's, so that's, not that's completely inaccurate, but <laughs> I, I know I, I, I joke, I joke, but it, it's just, it, to me, they just feel like very much of uh, like, Hey, we're just, we're kids doing some version of what John K. Sampson could have been doing at some point. Evilgreed.net is the website that you need to visit for one of the best web store slash merchandise solution providers in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And they're based out of Berlin, Germany. But first and foremost, you need to use this promo code 100 words, and then visit evilgreed.net. And you will be able to see this highly curated view of who it is that they work with. Like, they don't open the doors up for everybody. They work with a select few record labels, a select few bands. And it's all through the lens of this highly curated list. And I, I know that maybe is belaboring the points, but I want you to know that if you like one or two bands that are on their site, you are going to like pretty much all the bands. 
<laughs> Just to list a few, like some of the new stuff that they have there. They do a lot of work with Triple B Records. They also have just recently opened up a Soul Blind store. They also work with One Step Closer. They work with Sergeant House Records. They work with Nails. They work with Gate Creeper. I could go on and on, but trust me in saying that EvilGreed.net is the place that you need to check out and use the promo code 100 words, 10% off your order. And I know I said Berlin, Germany, that may be a little scary for some of you, but trust me, it ships very quick and gets to your doorstep safe and sound. I've ordered a few things from them and it's absolutely great. And you can buy vinyl, you can buy everything, not just merch. So evilgreed.net, 100 words is the promo code, 10% off your order exclusively for listeners of this podcast. So Go do that, and thank you for your support, Evil Greed, as always. Leftovers. Or... The DMV. Number 97. Or... House cleaning. Or... Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Well, yes, that was the uh, the Pine Grove record, 1111. And uh, Jeremy, what's your number seven? My number seven is the latest Christian Lee Hudson record called Quitters. Uh, as listeners of the show may remember, uh, his previous record, Beginners, I'm pretty positive was my favorite record of the year it that was. came out. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big Christian Lee Hudson fan. Uh, I do really love this record. It didn't hit me quite as hard as as uh, Beginners did, but uh, this record has some very good songs on it. Um, one in particular is a record is a uh, song called Age Difference, which uh, has some very incredible lines in it. Um, I just like his uh, comedic, snarky, self deprecating sort of approach to things. It's you know the same way that. Uh, Phoebe Bridgers does the same thing and 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 whatnot, but uh, um, I I timed out one of my or I pulled up one of my favorite lines, which is just like I couldn't imagine writing this down and then being like, yeah, I'm gonna find a really beautiful way to sing it, which is do my impression of John Malkovich critiquing food in prison. At first, it isn't funny, then it is, then it isn't. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's incredible! Yeah. It's incredible! How do you fit that in a song? Yeah. There yeah, you go. You it's, do. It's so, so good. So uh, shout out Christian Lee Hudson. Um, I finally got to see him live uh, earlier this year, and it did not disappoint whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, um, that's, I my, like, I, that's my number I, seven. I got into, I mean, based off of your last recommendation, I did get into this record, and this definitely was part of my general mix, because yeah, it was. Uh, it's also not too dissimilar to what you were saying about Alex G where this is just a perfect record to put on and just kind of just do stuff, just exist and be kind of like, yeah, this is real good. It's nice. Absolutely. Joey, what is your number seven? Um, First off, why did we never just do the snake before? It's so much easier. It's infinitely confusing. Um, Yes. My number seven is uh, this is going to blow your mind. uh, An Australian band called Romero. Uh, and the record is called Turn It On. Um, I love, I, I can't, like, it makes me so happy that every year you figure out a way to make this happen. And then I've never heard of the band. And then I get into it and I am thankful for you. This, Continue. Um, who did it in the States? I, I think, oh, Feel It Records did it in the States. Who did, oh my God. They're putting out a single on Sub Pop, but I can't think of what they're called. I don't know. Felix put out some really cool stuff, but this record um, by Romero, it reminds me of like Royal Headache meets Sheer Mag. And I swear this is a compliment, what I'm about to say. So I apologize in advance. It is a compliment. It's like Royal Headache meets Sheer Mag, but she can sing. That's nothing against Sheer Mag because I think her voice is wonderful. But like the woman who sings for this band is like, I don't know if she's like classically trained, but she used to tour in a blues brothers tribute band, you know, seeing like Aretha Franklin and like, I mean, wow. Unbelievable. And it's just like this, it was one of those things where I think I saw it, you know, somewhere. And, and so like I put it on in the store one day and it was just like, what the, heck? like 
who is this band? Like I knew nothing about them and it just, yeah, blew my mind. Like this record's unbelievable. Um, wow. That's cool. Was it like, so sort of like power pop adjacent? Yeah, like, but it, okay. It, all right. Like, is it riffy like Shermag? Yes. Okay. Yes. But then it's like, yeah, but it, it's super hooky and catchy. And then, her voice, like, it still has a little, like, gravelly is not the right word, but like a little, like, edge, a little, ed- edge, yeah, to little it. edge to it. But it's just like hitting these notes, and it, it's it's ridiculous. It's so good. I don't know if they'll come to the States. I hope they do. Um, because I would love to see, I'd love to hear these songs live. Um, well, maybe, a, maybe a major label will pick it up, and then all of a sudden, you know, they'll be boom. the, uh, There'll be like, uh, what? It, gosh, there was a a band I saw at one of the because uh, most of my radio knowledge comes from iHeart events that I go to. So that do you guys ever hear that band Mainskin? They like oh. nominate. Oh yeah, oh yeah, dude, Jeremy. I never even heard of this band, and then I saw them play at, like uh, uh, the iHeart Alter. E- did they ahead. win that the Eurovision? I think they did. Yeah, but it was just it was like. I can't even describe it. I mean, it's whatever. It's like, you know, you go on Spotify and you're just like, oh, wow, they got nine, four billion, ninety hundred million plays or whatever. And then they're just like this, like over the top sort of like darkness adjacent. Say, except not- like the darkness, but maybe a little less like good. Yeah. yeah. Like they were pretty. It was like, oh, jeez. Is it like, yeah. is it goofy it, like that? It, it, I mean, they like they're very Goofier. like the totally it's like the singer like they hardly wear clothes when they play like it's just it's wild they're not getting invited to the taylor hawkins benefit shows like the singer of darkness was you know what i mean like sure like yeah um, yeah but anyways but you could just easily like uh, just hearing the way that you're describing this band it could definitely just be like some major label person's like all right here we go let's go ahead and see if this happens you know that it's either gang of youths or gangs of youth oh yeah but they're australian i I mean i think it's I think they're on a major or like domino, like a bigger indie. And like, they're from Australia. Like I could easily see this band getting like swooped up and, you know, getting some more attention in, in the States. Sure. Uh, I mean, the best well, is selling out shows everywhere. So. Well, I'm psyched to check it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Romero. Um, my number six, uh, death cab for cutie asphalt meadows. Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting death cab to hit, any of our lists, but a here we are. Few years ago, I need, to, I need to give it a real shot. I really uh, do. It's yeah, I do too. A few years ago, when "Thank You for Today" came out, it made my list, and I was like, the best thing that ever happened to the band, is, or not, the best current thing that happened to the band was, um, dude who left. Why did I forget his name? Chris Walla. Chris Walla. And you guys are like, what the fuck? Like that's insane. Um, and I still I don't know. I don't know if we reacted it that was like way. You were but... flailing your arms and. I, I could have, I could have reacted that way. That sounds, that sounds like me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, and like, again, like this record is just, it's, I mean, it sounds like death cab, but it's like, they've got it back. Like it still has like moments of like experimentation, but it's not like an entire record of like, let's see how weird we can be with these beeps and boops. It's like, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. If you like death cab, I think it's, <clears throat> I said, thank you for today was their best record since plans. And I think this is now their best record since plans. Like, I think it's, I love it. Okay. It's great. I, need, I definitely need to spend more time with it. I listened to it two or three times through and it, it, there are, to your point, it feels like there's songs here as opposed to just kind of soundscapey stuff. Like, yeah, but yeah. yeah. I mean, Rain McNally is like, is beautiful. The chorus to here to forever is insane and then like we i think i don't know if ray and i have talked about but jeremy we've definitely talked about how death cab is their closers on the records are like aside from plans which they totally fucked up um is always like one of the best songs on the record and like the last yeah, that's... record is so good okay yeah i need to give it a genuine talk we, i'm sure this was mentioned uh last time you put death cab on the list but uh, I still struggle with um, smiling while singing Ben Gibbard, which you can hear the sonic change. You know what I'm saying? Like right. records, yeah. Records post. Uh, I think it's post plans. Maybe 
you just he, it he sings he audibly sings differently like it's got more it, it's more uh, for lack of a better term sort of cartoony like it's like you can hear he's using his mouth like in a really big way where he's like you know it's it's hard to explain but if you compare i can see the vocals that. on like yeah you compare mm-hmm. the vocals from transatlanticism to like anything now it is dramatically different yeah there's uh, a di- yeah, there's a different weight with it that's for sure yeah. yeah, and I and I think it's because he smiles while he sings. <laughs> That's what it looks like, at least. He's opening his mouth wider. It's like yeah. I'm singing now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a lot of mouth movement. So yeah, Death Cab. Beautiful. Still a fan. Can't wait to dive in more. Got my uh, postal service transatlanticism tickets. Can't that's wait. my i mean granted i know that's like a year from now, but that's what struck me kind of the wildest. Where I was like, y'all just put out a record, like. I assume they're still. Do they have tour dates coming up supporting yeah. this, or have they uh, already done all of that? They did oh, random geez. date, like some small date. Like when I say small dates, like small runs. Like they did some radio shows and stuff, but definitely not a full tour. Yeah, I hope yeah, yeah. they'll do like overseas stuff early next year, and then yeah, September. I also year. we of course it was like a five minute band van conversation when this got announced, but it's like you can see that there's some dates opened. Like, like they're going to definitely do more than one night in LA. They're going to definitely add, they added a second night in LA. They added a second night in New York. They added a second oh, yeah. night in Berkeley. Like there's two yeah. nights in Boston. We also had the talk of like, I appreciate the going for itness of having both of these things celebrated, but dog split them up. Yeah. Get that, Get that double money. Up that money. Fuck. Yeah. Like, dude, totally. <laughs> that's the thing is post. Sorry. <clears throat> Postal service can play these these size rooms by themselves. So oh, could, yeah. and also so could a transatlanticism tour. Dude, I don't know if you transatlanticism could do, could do two nights oh, in Madison Square Garden. I think they could I I bet he could do they could do two nights at the Hollywood Bowl and then yeah. and then they could definitely do postal service at uh Madison Square Garden or something. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. there's enough nostalgia love there. So that's why I'm just like, this is like it's like what like 20 shows top it's short like, it's like a short little run yeah well he, he's got it he has to worry about his uh ultra marathon <laughs> he's like an ultra marathon dude yeah. now so it's like he's got he's got to have plenty of time to do that <laughs> I, you know i'll you know we also have the talk is like who closes and we're like it has to be death cap closing. postal service you think i i I, I, I agree i think it's postal service i yeah. think i think that record is way bigger than transatlanticism sure but i think i think the conversation was like other members of Death Cab feeling is involved. They're you like, know what I'm saying? I think they see they're, the texts that are coming they're in. They're like, now. one, two, <laughs> what, where would we play? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we're good. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> is, is, there, is there an opener? Uh, there can't be. There what, cannot what, be. What is a... Uh, uh, or what? Uh, uh, quarter, all-time quarterback? Will all-time open? Quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say all-American football, but I'm like, nope, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, that'd be... that. But it, I mean... You can easily see this going as well as it obviously already is. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, well, now we can tour off of, you know, our new record that we put out a year ago <laughs> in 2024. Yeah, it's just it, it, interesting, interesting choices. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, shout out, shout out, getting that fucking, getting that bag. Yeah. yeah. My light on. It's very dark in this room now. Yeah, yeah. go for Go for it, Ben. Go for it. <laughs> Say so go and good for Jenny Lewis. I know because I mean, her acting career hasn't panned out at all. So she was talking. She tweeted something like twenty twenty three is going to be a big year. It's like does that, does that mean Rilo Kylie's getting back together? Also, that means the Wizard reboot. You know that's happening sometime oh, soon. Would watch. Yeah. Like Fred, oh, for Fred, sure. Fred Savage seems like maybe not a great guy. No, you, but you, you attach her to it and like, you can easily see that just, you know, they'll, they'll do it for a new age where it's like, instead of, you know, traveling to a video game competition, they will be going to like, Oh, let's go into the metaverse. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> yeah. Something awful. Uh, is it my, did you do that? Two? It is the I did ju- my ju- six. So yep. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Uh, my number six record is the praise record all in a dream. I really like praise. I am a fan. Uh, Beautiful pants. 
Yeah, the record, the EP that they put out before this was one of my favorite things that had been released in like the last fucking 10 years, I would say. Uh, And this record did not disappoint. Um, It sounds right out of uh, a Discord Records catalog from, you know, 20 plus years ago. Uh, 30 years ago, actually. Um, God. (laughs) But anyway, uh, it's awesome. Um, The Husker Du cover at the end of the record is fantastic. Uh, I embarrassingly didn't know that was a cover and uh, talked to uh, their their vocalist about it on the podcast. And he would and he let me know it was a cover where I felt very stupid. Um, But anyway, uh, celebrate it because it's really fucking good. This band is really, really good. And I really wish that they were able to do more. But obviously, uh, they all got jobs. They got a drummer that's in uh, one of the biggest bands in the entire world. Uh, and yeah, so shout out the Praise record. Very, nice. very good. Do you guys I, like this record? I do. I like Praise. I, 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 may, I may be talking about it at a later number, so I'll reserve my feelings. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, well, then, all right. Moving on. Uh, Ray, what is your number six? My number six record is the chat pile record god's country i cannot believe how good this record is i the i liked their stuff on the portrayal of guilt split and i was like this is cool and then you know kind of just like whatever tacitly followed the band and i oh like i and I'm sure you guys feel this way too. Like when a band comes from an area that is like completely off the beaten path where you're just like, so you're from Oklahoma city. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> and this record came out and I was like, Oh, this is good. And then the song, the second song on the record, why comes on. And then I'm like, Jesus, Lord almighty. Can this just be played as the soundtrack in like government buildings in some capacity? It is like the, you don't even have to like the band at all, but you can listen to the song and just understand the emotions of just like a simple question asking, like, why, why do people live outside? And he just repeats that. And it's just, it, I compared it. Um, and it was funny, just like other, once I started to share that song on my socials and people were just like, oh my God, the song's great or what have you. Uh, there were certain people that were like, oh, I thought this band sucked. <laughs> they listened to this song and all of a sudden it just opened up my world to them. But to me, it's a great combo of like Godflesh Street C- Cleaner era with like Rollins Band. It's just all of this weird stuff combined into a really, really amazing record. So yeah, I I listen to it a lot. And anytime anybody hears the record, they're intrigued, even though they may not like it. <laughs> they're like, what's this? I can't really tell what's happening. But yeah, I love the band. And it's just cool that they don't put that i mean they put effort to the band but they're just like oh we'll play shows whenever we feel like it and you know maybe we'll get asked to do some shows here and there and maybe we'll play the uh overlook hotel with the you know lingua ignata and like just do these shows whenever we want to and it's cool so yeah chat pile love what they do that's a record that like i kept kept seeing just like all over the place and i was talking to someone i was like what is this band and they're like oh it sounds like jesus lizard like well i'm out like don't need to listen to that and one like we got copies at the store and I was like, whatever, I'll put it on. Like, you know, got to know what you're selling. And it, was <laughs> like, it blew me away. Like this record's insane. Yeah. I was listening to it and there's a song, I think towards the end that has like, like almost like a corn bass. Oh yeah. And this dude is in the store and he's like, you know, whatever. And he's like, is this corn? He's like, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's just being chap out. And like, he's like buying it. He's like, this is, this is sick. Charlie. I will be talking about this record in a little while. <laughs> That's great. I had a, I had a feeling because yeah, yeah, I just I think it's very much up a lot of people's alleys, understandably it's, so, which is awesome. So yeah, uh, yes, that was my number six. Moving on to my number five record is the Spice record, Viv. I cannot believe how much I enjoy it. Like it, when they put out their first record, it was like. Oh, cool. Like, you know, like Ross from Ceremonies, like other band, whatever, that does stuff whenever there's time. And it was great. And then this record is just like, oh, Ross, like they, he's like completely unlocked this whole like singing side of himself. And it feels like the music is even catchier. It just felt like everything that, um, they started obviously started to experiment with their first LP just was able to like come to fruition probably way earlier than maybe any of us would have thought. (laughs) It was like, Oh, now you're really kicking on all cylinders. So, uh, 
yeah, just, I mean, especially if you listen to like the jump between the two LPs, it's just like, really? This is not even like, this is the same band, but it just, it just cooks. I love it. I can't stop listening to it. So I presume both of you guys like this record. I will be talking about this record in a while. <laughs> I will admit this was <clears throat> one of the records that got bumped for John Reese. Um, I think it's just because it came out a long ago and I listened to it so much that I was like, I got to take a break. And it just, yeah, it's hard when you, I, I like similar to what you're saying, like with that anxious record where it's like, it came out in January. I listened to it so hard for two months. And then I was just like, Oh, it's been a while, but yeah, I understand. But I do really like it a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Jeremy, what's your number five record? My number five record is the birds in row record. Chris Klein. There you go. Um, I do agree with you, Ray, that this sounds like all of their efforts have culminated to this record, but I will say that I have been a fan since day one. Yes. Uh, they've, they have songs on every one of their records, multiple songs on every one of the records that what they're able to do, if this makes sense, and I'm sure it does for you guys, of course, and for listeners, but like some bands just are able to write the parts and songs of this genre that just make you go, fuck. Like, this band knows how to go to halftime in such a good way. You know, devoid of mosh parts, but just fast part to halftime and have it hit every single time to where you're just like, oh my god. Um, And the fact that they've been able to accomplish that as a three-piece since the get-go is also really fascinating. Um, Bart is at this point the sole original member of this band, but he's clearly the driving force of it. No offense to the other members that have obviously written on this record. Uh, but Bart has had a vision um, since I think the band started for what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, he's a brilliant artist. He's a brilliant writer. Um, his voice has just gotten stronger and stronger. His singing voice is a lot more confident. Um, yeah, I just, man, when I heard this thing the first time, I was just like, holy shit, you guys really did it. And the production on it's incredible. Um, I think oh, it's he, beautiful. I think he mentions in the interview that the I think someone from Cult of Luna potentially uh, mixed the mixed record. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas like they're a kind of band that's been going to the same producer since day one, and they've all the records have always sounded really strong. Um, but I think maybe having that outside person come in and do the mixing on it um, maybe set it apart as well from the others. Um, but yeah, I love this band so so much, uh, and this record is fantastic. So there you go. The, That's my number five. The drumming. I I know I briefly mentioned the drum, but the drumming too is just so, so cool because you feel like, especially bands of this genre, whatever loosely affiliated screamo where it's like, there are some times where the drumming can get so fast that the, the song obviously like falls apart, which is part of the charm of the genre in general. But like you feel that the drummer has complete control over wherever the song is heading, regardless of how fast or slow it is, which I know sounds like so basic where it's like, yeah, that's what a drummer's supposed to do, idiot. But it's like, that's hard to do in this genre. (laughs) Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, I'm David Eagleman. I have a new podcast called Inner Cosmos on iHeart. I'm a neuroscientist and an author at Stanford University, and I've spent my career exploring the three-pound universe in our heads. On my new podcast, I'm going to explore the relationship between our brains and our experiences by tackling unusual questions so we can better understand our lives and our realities. Like, does time really run in slow motion when you're in a car accident? Or... Can we create new senses for humans? Or what does dreaming have to do with the rotation of the planet? So join me weekly to uncover how your brain steers your behavior, your perception, and your reality. Listen to Inner Cosmos with David Eagleman on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Joey, what is your... Are we at number five? Joey, what is your number five? Number five. 
<clears throat> my number five is Muna, self-titled. Um, this record, the A side of this record is my number one record of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love it. The B, the B side, like, it, I, <clears throat> I think is kind of lackluster besides the, I think the last song shooting star is amazing. Um, which is why it drops to five. But I mean, this, um, person I know, um, named Carl, who does a project called gay meat. His Twitter account is gay meat. Carl tweeted, uh, Muna could write karma police, but Radiohead could never write silks or fawn. And it's just like, it's stuck with me from the day I read that. And I was like, God damn it. Like <laughs> it's so a good description. Tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, like, I think silks or fawns were maybe the best song of the year. Like the song's insane. Um, yeah, the record's the record's great, and I feel like their their trajectory is only going up. Um, I haven't listened to this actual record, but I've heard the singles, and I think I've watched some performances of them on like TV and stuff like that. And it's all, it's just like so hooky. It's like so, super super I mean, hooky. The there's a song called Home by Now, and then the song after it is called Kind of Girl, and like the one two punch of those songs is just like, what are we doing here? Like unbelievable. <laughs> It's like, it's like banger into like a slow jam. It's, uh, it's so good. So good. I also just love like the idea and mostly the fact that Phoebe Bridgers can like basically do whatever the hell she wants. And like, it's just so cool. It's like, you're like Hey, do you want a record label? Yeah. 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 I'm going to sign this band. That's cool. Do you want to play uh Sally and nightmare before Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds fun. You want to sing on scissors record? Sure. Like just all, all the stuff that she's able to do and like highlight and then also take part in is just is cool where it's like, you know, a band like Muna, like they obviously would have found success in some capacity, I mean, but for her major label. Right. Yeah. The fact, the fact that like going to an indie actually and just being affiliated with Phoebe Bridgers is like what kind of, set them off considering they had just already had a record on a major. Right, totally. <laughs> They're like, ah, we can't really do much for you guys anymore. Uh, then you can see everybody yeah. else is like, Oh, we messed up. <laughs> we yeah. didn't know what we were doing. I mean, it's, a, it's, it kind of speaks to like the, you know, the power of like a, a reliable taste maker as much as I hate that phrase, but it's like, it's a true thing, you know? I mean, they're opening for Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, Insane. Which makes, yeah. uh, which sonically makes so absolutely, much sense. but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah, it's wild how this band just keeps keeps getting bigger. But yeah, this record's unbelievable. Um, well, the A side of this record is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fine, it's not bad. It's just like it's a very front loaded record, minus the last song. So well, maybe short. if you they listen to Punisher and we're like, oh, that's what we got to do. Real front loaded right. and a banger yeah. of a, an ender. I was about to say, well, maybe if you put together the uh, A side of the Bell and Sebastian record in this, like, oh, oh my God, wow, you had a hell of a record there. <laughs> my number four. Um, I am 99% sure this is how you say this band's name. You can tell me something different, and it's not even that weird. I'm just like, I look at it and feel like I'm saying it wrong. Uh, Weezer? Lucius, second nature. <laughs> What'd you say, Jeremy? <laughs> Weezer? <laughs> Weezer. Um, their season. Coffee? Um, wait, wait. So I'm sorry, I fucked that all uh, up for you. What's what's the band? Lucius, Lucius, Second Nature. Um, who, I don't even think about. I don't even know who put it out. Look at me doing my research. On this oh one. my gosh! Yeah, what a fuck. Hey, oh wait, hey, hey, hey Joey. Record labels don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Mom and Pop. It looks like they released. All right, this this has it listed as Second Nature. Just, that's not it's not a second nah, wait when you keep like not is obviously the label right like this ain't coming out of Kansas Spotify City. says second uh, second nature records not recording it's got to be something different no second nature is the record right no is that what you're looking at oh well, it's a light okay that's what it is it's licensed second nature is the record it must be licensed to secretly there we go got it all right oh. okay <laughs> I'm really paying attention to myself here I don't even know what the name of the record was um is it they've it's, I think this is their third full length. And like, I, I remember getting the, like the one sheet or the email, whatever. And it was like, Oh my God, this sounds way up my alley. Like, I don't know who this band is. So I ordered a few and like the day it came out, a guy came in who was like, Oh, you got that Lucius? 
And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I love this band. I've been seeing them for years. Like they always play Newport Folk. And I was like, this isn't their first record. And he's like, no. <laughs> wow. I had no idea who this band was. Um, it's, I don't know if there's, it's two women, um, harmonies through the roof. And it's like, I feel like I'm terrible at comparisons, but whatever. It's like Tegan and Sarah's heartthrob meets the last Rilo Kylie record. Oh, wow. Um, mm, okay. It's like, there's dancey songs. There's quiet songs. They do a song with Brandy Carlisle and Cheryl Crow. Whoa. Um, Whoa. And they were just on Saturday Night Live with Brandy Carlisle because they're on one of her songs on the most recent Brandy Carlisle record. So they're just okay. on Saturday Night Live doing backup vocals. Um, Didn't they, like now, I'm. they did something with War on Drugs, right? Like, weren't they, didn't they like do, or were they featured on a song? I don't know. It's just one of those things, like now that you say that and are describing it, I'm like, ah, oh, female vocal. Yeah, obviously female vocals, um, but anyways. I, they, I think, are on the song I Don't Live, or they're no, they're somewhere on the record of I Don't Live Here Anymore, which maybe. Oh, okay. Like, All right. That's maybe just the why um, it's stuck in my brain. It's, I mean, it's just super catchy, you know, way it, it's, you, you listen to it and you're like, oh, this is, this is a Joey record. Yes. <laughs> well, your, your description definitely fits in line with that. Yeah. I'm like, all right, like I always have to yeah. put at least one record where I can be like, oh, it sounds like Rilo Kylie. Even yeah. if it doesn't, I always have to, you know. Yeah. When you, said it was like two, when you said it was like two women vocalists, I was thinking it was going to sound like first aid kit. Cause I know that's like, maybe they're filling the hole for first aid kit for you this year or something. Oh, they're not. We'll talk uh, soon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me not realizing first aid kit had a record. I know. I was about to say, I didn't know they released a new record this year. Whoops. How about that? Uh, that's oh. awesome. Spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, spoiler Coming alert. Soon. Oops. Oops. Uh, um, yeah, Lucius. It's great. Awesome. I've, is it, I'd like to see it my, sometime. Go my number four? My number four is the Spice record. Uh, it's called Viv. Uh, it's awesome. It, uh, again, to what you were saying, Ray, uh, there is seemingly a sonic shift between, um, the first, the first 12 inch and this one, they had a seven inch between the two, but the 12 inch, I mean, that all my best shit song. That's like the opening track on that first, it's like, I could listen to that song on repeat and I often have, um, but this is more of like a, uh, even honestly kind of sounds like interpol in a lot of ways dude i honestly i uh, there are certain moments where it's just like oh man this feels like just a little catchier turn on the bright lights era like yeah or obstacle i don't know totally. yeah that yeah that vibe. the uh the song uh live scene it's on i believe side b uh it would be in my top three songs of the year for sure it just caught me at the right time like listening to the record in full and I just like kept coming back to it being like, oh my God, this song is so fucking good. Uh, love what Ross is doing vocally. Um, my boy Mike Bingham is in the band now, which is nice. Um, so yeah, they're, uh, they're fucking I haven't, great. I've never seen them, have you? I, uh, I did earlier this year. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. they played actually with Spiritual Cramp um, at uh, Zebulon uh, here in LA. And oh yeah. You have like a, the, the violinist like plays live, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's like, a, it's like they're like a six piece or something like that. But um, they're really good. They're really, really good. I would love to see um, them doing more, but uh, I just don't know how legit, you know. Yeah, like, realistic it is. Realistic yeah. it is, especially with Ross about to have a kid, all this sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, I love this record. The kids um, don't aren't work. <laughs> no, as seen like me and a giant baby dog just thrashing around like a lunatic. Totally. Uh, but yeah, I, this record's awesome. And uh, um, shout out to uh, to Ross for, for being able to, it's, you know, I feel like it's hard a lot for um, people who sing in notable bands to do side projects that are uh, not so far off from like what their previous band is, but I have it be able to have a complete and own identity. You know what I'm saying? Like for sure. If you, if you just threw this on, you would not think like, "Oh, that's the singer of ceremony in any capacity." And I think being on Deus is like a different, a completely different vibe. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It. 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 And it, to that point, like what we were talking about, you know, Phoebe Bridgers and stuff. It's just like that cosine allows it where it's like 
this is more than just a side project of Ross or whatever. It's like, no, we believe in this band. We believe in this art. It stands on its own. You to what you're saying, Jeremy, it doesn't even need to be identified as anything that Ross from ceremony is involved in. This is just a really good record you need to listen to. Yeah. And I mean, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to like, mention. no, 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 I'm just saying though, like, yeah. like for his sake, for the band's sake, for Dias's sake, like to, for like promoting the record where it's like, it's cool that it's Ross from Ceremony, but you can't go into it expecting it to sound anything like Ceremony. And I think if you are a Ceremony fan, you'll still enjoy this because you're like likely into music that is, you know, a, close enough to this. Especially like the later Ceremony, like the last. Oh totally. gosh, completely. If anything, I would say I would compare. If like I had to pull anything from Ceremony, like it's kind of like if the L shaped man was a was more aggressive. You know, it's like that more sort of that energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I love this record. It's great. So that's my uh, that's my number four. Ray, what is your number four? My number four record is a record you spoke of previously. It is the Praise record, All in ah. a Dream. I concur with everything you're saying. Obviously, I the literal progression. I mean, granted, like that EP came out many years ago, but I was to say, like, I've been all on board personally for the get go of this band. I'm like everything they do. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wow, this is so cool. And this also is just a, such a nice respite to anything that you want to listen to next to. It's like, oh, you just listen to a really heavy record. You can listen to this or you listen to a really light record. And then you could, it's just, it is such a perfect companion piece to anything you're listening to, or you just put this record on and really, really enjoy it. You can tell how thoughtful Andy was in regards to, his lyrics, because I think especially with the whole, you know, whatever DC influences and everything, it's so easy to just like fall down the well of hyperbole, cheesy lyrics, like just like, this is, uh, this is my dramatic voice. And like it, it, and it doesn't fall into that at all. And that's what I think makes the record so strong is because not only musically they push forward, but like lyrically and he really dialed in without, you know, tripping over himself, which is really hard to do. So. For Big sure. Shots. I was psyched because I feel like the Praise and Spice Records both came out like the same month. And that kind of made me feel like, oh, this is going to be a better year for music for me personally than the last <sighs> couple of years. I I agree because I actually had, I mean, honestly, there's probably like 17, 18 records that I had kind of in consideration for this. And it did feel like there was a lot more mm-hmm. for me to personally choose from. Same. Like There were records, <clears throat> like, I don't know if, I'll wait and mention it later if no one, I don't know if anyone else is going to mention it, but um, so I'll wait, but there's another record kind of in the vein of uh, spice and praise ish, I guess. That, I know, I know where you're going. Like could have made my list and it, Got like, it. it just, you know, ultimately where fell out. <laughs> yes. You got to yes. keep in all of the, the very adorable yeah. child voices that just kind of come, come. Of course. Out. I just, I, the only thing I'm going to have to do is send, I have to send you a, uh, a dis- well, not a disclo- a release agreement. So that way he can appear on the podcast <laughs> and he won't sue me later. Um, no, <laughs> In 25 I'm not, years I'm not from now. Anything. Oh, damn it. I know. Yeah. Tw- yeah. 25 years later. Dad, you brought unauthorized. Put me on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. See, as his dadager, I'm going to at least get, I need to get 15%. He's, oh, his, I'll send no you. No problem. I'll send you his. Uh, yeah. Send me oh. a standard boilerplate agreement. That's yeah. fine. Uh, all right. The number three record for me, uh, which is number very th- much inspired. Number three. Yeah. Is that? I'm yeah. Yeah. Confused. Sorry. <laughs> the number three record was very much inspired by uh, one Joey Cahill on this conversation is the best record expert in a dying field. I, I, this is a record that this is honestly the first record, like my son has latched onto where mm-hmm. he's like, I'm like literally getting him a copy of it on vinyl because he listens. It, it the, nothing is cuter than hearing an 11 year old being like an expert in a dying field just like just out of nowhere just like singing it around the house it's like ever uh, in charlie bliss a few years ago right exactly same same principle um i just think that this i mean once you keyed us into the baths i liked them since whatever 2020 or whenever you first mentioned it and uh if not before then but i think this record is just a more polished and mature version of what it is that they're doing. And it feels like they 
not only are more confident than they ever have been, but they're just like, yeah, we're a well-oiled machine. We know how the we know how to write hooks. We know how to make ourselves sound like somewhat like the Beach Boys or the Beatles, but then also like not like them at all, guys. We're not your we're not your grandparents' Beatles. Like we're so much cooler than that. <laughs> so yeah, I just love this I, record. So I wanted to like it so much more. Oh no, it didn't even make your list. That's heartbreaking. It gets kind of boring. Oh, I'm the sorry. First song is like. I'm like, all right, here we go. And then it just kind of like, I just kind of, it kind of loses me. unfortunately, because I do like the baths. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. okay. Not, they seem to be doing ever- fine without me loving this record. So <laughs> I'll, when I see them come through in uh, March to the States, I'm just going to let them know. Please. Just be like, Hey guys, you lost a fan in Joey Cahill. He just, what are they, they playing in, in LA? They're playing at the Fonda in LA. Headlining. Yeah, dude. I mean, they they sold out two nights at the Sinclair here. Wow! Like months in advance. Wow! Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I like to hear that. Good for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're number three, Jeremy. What you got? Leftovers or the DMV number ninety-seven or the DMV. Number 97. Or house cleaning or. Chumba Casino always brings the fun. Play over a hundred different games online for free from anywhere. You could redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. Live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, I'm David Eagleman. I have a new podcast called Inner Cosmos on iHeart. I'm a neuroscientist and an author at Stanford University, and I've spent my career exploring the three-pound universe in our heads. On my new podcast, I'm going to explore the relationship between our brains and our experiences by tackling unusual questions so we can better understand our lives and our realities. Like, does time really run in slow motion when you're in a car accident? Or... Can we create new senses for humans? Or what does dreaming have to do with the rotation of the planet? So join me weekly to uncover how your brain steers your behavior, your perception, and your reality. Listen to Inner Cosmos with David Eagleman on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. My number three is the drug church record. It's called Hygiene. I like that was that was part of my consideration set as well. Love that record. Yeah. Um, it's funny when it first came out, I was like, hell yeah, this sounds like songs that could have been on cheer. And I like that. Like, you know, and that's not to disparage the record. I've had plenty of talks with with uh, Pat about how he leading up to this. Pat was like, yeah, we wrote a bad record. So like, I, I think we need to I need I think my band needs to learn a lesson and we should put this out and see them uh, see how it feels like. About a bad record. Yes. Like he was like, he, that's how that's how he was selling me on it early on. He was like, yeah, we wrote a pretty bad record, but like, who cares? I think we need to learn from like having a, a record not be well received. Like, you know, very packed. We got to take, take some lumps here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> this is a record that like, they were like, cheer was great. Now, li- now listen to this. Yeah. I have no idea where his like, cause then when I heard the record, I was like, okay, Pat's just like trying to, bl- trying to just downplay how good this is. Cause the record is fucking awesome. It's so it's, good. It's got so many hooky parts. Like his vocals continue to sound better, whether that's studio magic or not. He'll be honest with you about that one. But um, (laughs) it's, I just, I just love what this band does. I think, you know, we talk about them uh, a lot amongst ourselves uh, in our van or whatever. And like, I love that this band has a signature sound, which is so hard to do, you know, I think in the, especially in this day and age, but like the guitar tones you as soon as you hear the guitar tone and the drum sound you just know it's a drug church song the the funniest thing maybe not the funny you would listen to the spice record we'd listen to the store a hundred percent of the time it would go into like drug church radio oh yeah no sorry it would go into spice radio drug church fiddlehead oh but it like instantly would be in drug church song we're just like oh yep there's drug church yeah, it's like I can, yep. I know that I hear that sound. I'm just instantly like, oh, that's, yep, know what it is. Yeah, and you know, I I applaud them for it because they've if you put on their lit like literally their demo cassette from you know at this point over ten years ago, yeah, like it's got the same sound. You know, like they've 
just nourished the sound and just, you know, made it sound better throughout different, better recordings and whatnot, better songwriting, et cetera. But like this band had a vision very early on, whether they realized it or not, and they've just grown on it. And it's just, it's, it's exciting to see. Um, I love this band a whole lot. And, uh, you know, you, you can always strap in for a good, uh, lyrical adventure with whatever Pat's going to say. Uh, and I love them for it. So yeah, uh, my number three, drug church hygiene the the thing that's so cool about this band is that they've also what is their fourth lp with an ep in the middle like it might just, even be the fifth i think it's their fifth yeah like they, do, they also keep getting bigger like they like yeah i mean i saw they're doing that prince daddy tour and like playing good sized room like yeah it's awesome to see like yeah well they've def- they've, they've definitely hit it yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, it seems like, I mean, obviously with them choosing to release stuff on pure noise and like give the band a quote unquote real go <laughs> rather than like, you know, what they were kind of doing previously, where it's just like, yeah, obviously we'll just exist and play some shows occasionally, et cetera, et cetera. But it, feel, it feels like all of a sudden they captured the younger audience that they, you know, rightfully deserves to be in front of. And so now it's like those kids are, catching on to them not only with the ep and then cheer and then obviously this new record but yeah now and that gives them the ability to play in front of you know large crowds which is awesome i want to correct this is their fourth record i'm just confusing it because they had those two 12 inch eps as well the swell and tawny oh yes that's right because i I forgot about tawny but yeah yeah exactly um but yeah i mean they've been doing it since 2013 so they are well their first demo came out in 2011 so yeah it's 11 year old band i i remember i was uh helping out no sleep when paul walker got released and i was just like that's 2013 that's like that is a long ass time ago man yeah it's and you know i've been making the joke on this episode about how record labels don't matter but like we could you know potentially credit uh pure noise for for uh helping them get you know, so a lot more exposure to uh, an audience that is more in tune with uh, more or less the genre that they're playing. So I don't know. Yeah, they've uh, younger. I think that to your point, I think it's the a, a younger demographic. It's not necessarily like that. I mean, record labels, to your point, like do not matter. But at the same time, like if they are able to capture some sense of an audience, that what that's what is important. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. Shout out Thanks. Drug Church. Uh, Joey, what is your number three? First aid kit, Palomino. <laughs> I had no idea they released a new record this year. So funny. It's sounds like first aid kit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did this was it this year that they put out that Leonard Cohen tribute record? Or was that last that year? That was late last year. Go downstairs and get a snack, baby. You can. Just give me one second. Hey, get me a snack too. <laughs> um, I mean it like I really liked Ruins a lot. I felt it was a, a little like not quite as upbeat. And this one kind of like the first song, what is it? Out of your head, out of my, out of my head, like starts out like quiet. And then it just kicks in and you're like, let's go. Like I was all in instantly. Oh um, yeah. It's great. Sounds like first aid kit. If you like the band, here you go. It's also a good entry point. I think if you've never really given them a shot, how, how big is first aid kit? Like if they if they played L.A., where are they playing? I would guess Wiltern. Are they that big? I mean, it's you know, being a, a lifelong uh, Bostonian, um, I only know Boston venues. Um, <laughs> but they, I mean, they sold out House of Blues here, which I think is like twenty five. Oh, that's that's big. Like yeah, they, yeah, they're, yeah. they're coming back and they're playing Roadrunner, which is thirty five. Hell yeah. Um, I get like, and I, I, I'm not asking that question in any sort of like downplaying them at all. Like it's one of those things where like, they've been so consistent with releases that I've actually not ever been aware if like they have such a deep cult following. Cause they strike me as a band that does. And see, that's where, where I, when I, the first time I saw them, I was like, they played house of blues and I was like, Oh cool. Like y'all just go get tickets. And it was like sold out. Like <laughs> yeah. what are we talking about? Like yeah. who likes this band? <laughs> And it turns out a lot of people. Um, I th- that's like that, that's like Beach House as an, another example, where it's just like most people like Beach House, and obviously they've existed for many years. Their releases are so consistent. Their newest record that came out was very much in my my scope of like, oh, I'm interested in seeing them. They announced like dates in like Ventura, and here they play at House of Blues in or in Anaheim, and I was like, oh, like maybe I'll just pop in and see uh, some tickets. They announced it like the day before, and then I was like. 
oh, that sold out in like 40 seconds. Like, see you later. Not happening. So yeah, there. Yeah, that band is, I mean, that band has uh, over 10 million monthly listeners. They are fine. They got some heat. <laughs> yeah, they are they can, fine. They can draw some people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. First Aid Kid is playing the Palladium. When in LA? LA? Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. No, that's it. So yeah, they, I mean, they, they do all right. Yeah. yeah. Do some good business, as uh, they say in the biz. Yeah. <laughs> um, my number two. Um, my number two is a record by a band called Bob Villain. The record is called Bob Villain Presents the Price of Life. Um, their band, I, I was in London and just was in All Ages Records. And we were just talking about, uh, you know, like stuff. And he was like, oh, what do you like? You know, blah, blah, blah whatever. And he's like, I got to play this record. I was like, cool. And he played me this EP that Venn Records put out by Bob Dylan. And it was just like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever heard. Um, and instantly, like, the first press was sold out. So I went to Discogs and found, like, a copy on Red. And was like, well, I have to buy this. Um, <laughs> and it's like, to me, they sa- to me, they sound like Rage Against the Machine if 30 years later the trajectory wasn't like bad new metal, like I feel like it's cause I mean, it's not like, I mean, he raps, but he's there's like someone else described it as streets meets dead Kennedys. Oh, okay. There it's very British. Yeah. Like you can hear the accents. Yeah. And like the, in the lyrics, every very British, but then there's just like, there'll be just like a, a hardcore song, but then like, almost like a dub song about eating healthy. And, the, but like, they're also, they're, you know, pretty loud about like, eh, if you're racist, we're just going to kick the shit out of you. Like yeah. that's not our problem. Um, yeah. I went and saw, like, they, they, they came over here with probably, uh, is it ammo in the sniffers? Is that a, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I went and saw them. They played at one of my least favorite venues in Boston. And I was like, I don't care. Like I, I have to go see them. And it was like, no one really knew who they were. And it was just like, it was one of those things where by the end, people are like moshing and, you know, like he's jumping in the crowd and like, you know, winning over a crowd of a thousand on like a Sunday night at, you know, it, it was cool to see. Um, yeah, great. But it was like, you know, it's, it was one of those rare things where walking into a record store, knowing literally nothing of this band, never heard of them and walking out like with something new, which, you know, I think especially these days with the internet and, you know, being big dorks, like that doesn't happen as often anymore. Uh, yeah. It's really cool to have that just, just random experience. Like I'm going to drop this in here. And like, that's just yeah, cool. And it's, it's like, I listen to it all the time. Like I went out of my way to find copies for the store. Like I love this record. Um, yeah. What's the name of it? Bob villain. But does the record have a title? Uh, yeah. The Price of Life. Bob Villain presents The Price okay, of Life. Yeah. Um, okay, got they're it. They're a two-piece, and it's like a drummer and a singer, and like they, you know, there's guitars and stuff on the record, but it's all sampled in, like there's not a live guitar player. Um, sure. They both go by the name Bobby. It's great. Awesome. Good merch. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's my number two. Is it my number two now? Which I think you? it is. Uh, my number two is the, I, don't, I guess we're, I'm just going to call it a record because it might be a glorified EP. I don't know. I don't care. I don't play by the rules. I'm a bad boy. You, uh, you've the, always been a bad boy on these. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the Greet Death, the latest Greet Death record, <sighs> which is called New Low. Dude, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, see, this was like an interesting release because uh, due to, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure I had the conversation with potentially Trey about it or rich about it but i think because of severe vinyl delays like they just were dropping singles for this for like what felt like a year and a half but like (laughs) eight months apart from one another kind of a thing um but i liked the last release that death wish did um and it got a lot of uh critical acclaim um but this as soon as i mean the first single i think they dropped was the last song on it which is called like i hate everything um and i love that song so much and then with each single that they dropped um i just was like oh my god this might be like the best fucking record ever so um 
yeah uh it's yeah i hate everything is the last track and then the the song panic song which is like sort of like a shoegazy um almost like pains of being pure at heart sort of energy song um which is track two is fantastic uh the second last song your love is alcohol is great so like i don't know it's i'm a big fan i think this record is fantastic um it is only five songs uh but it is 20 minutes long and my argument for putting this on here is uh uh, I don't know. My band's first record is considered an LP and that's only 20 <laughs> minutes long. So fuck you. Uh, well, Trash Talk did a 13 minute LP. You're fine. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. What I'm saying. That's what it's I'm a, saying. it's a quantity, not quality or what, whatever the saying. Time. Just I don't know. Yeah. It's time. Look at Metallica. Yeah. They have like seven song records that are like an hour and a half. So, yeah. um, anyway, uh, I love this record. Uh, I haven't they're, seen them live yet. They're from, they're from Boston, right? uh Gen- i think if i remember correctly I I, midwestern but, but i could be wrong yeah um, flint michigan oh how about that yeah flint michigan yeah wow oh okay yeah yeah my bad but yeah, yeah. i i i love this thing it, it did i it, you described it exactly well when it was just it felt like this slow drip and I, every song i listened to i was like last one was cool but this one i'm like damn dude what are they doing with this and then once it all came together i was like this is very very good yeah, it's it's extremely good. I don't know if does this exist on vinyl yet. We have. Uh, y- y- I think it does. Yes, it does now. Okay. Yeah, I think it does. Um, because again, that was one of those like rollout things that I that I don't know if they actually had shipped. Yep, they do exist. Fucking, yep, there you go. Fucking pop it in the cart right now. You know, put your uh, employee discount code in there, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you haven't listened to this great death uh, EP <coughs> record, um, it's called New Low, and it's so good. So, so good. So that's my number two. Uh, Ray. What's yes. Number two. My number two is the band that I think Joey was sort of alluding to a little bit earlier, a United Kingdom band called high viz and their that's record. One. I figured as much. I saw, I read between the lines there. <laughs> the record is called blending and Jesus Lord almighty. Is this record good? I, it, I liked what they did before and it was cool. And this record could not have surprised me more as like, especially as the single started to come out. I uh, like Jeremy attended the outbreak music festival and I was able to watch their set over in the UK. And it very much felt like, and I know both you guys have had this feeling too, of watching a band at a fest where it feels like a coming out party for them. Hmm. They were like, legitimately shocked it was one of those things after the first song they played the singer was just like looking around being like what What? this is crazy you guys are going off and uh even like their newer songs that they because they played like two or three new songs off of this record that had not come out yet but they had released singles and people were still like stage having it going off like it was a a hardcore song that they were playing Uh, it's so catchy so like there's it, as weird as it sounds, there's like parts of it vocally that remind me of like NXS, which is weird, but like, there's just, just little hits of it. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, in the same vein as spice, like anything, you know, post punk sort of hardcore adjacent. And then obviously the Dias records connection is really, really cool as well to see them pushing people that are into like, you know, dark wave and that sort of stuff to be like, you probably should check out this band as well. So yeah, love the record. I almost feel like, you know, when like a movie, or a TV show nominates two people from the same thing and like splits the votes. Like, oh, right. It's like, and it's not a dis- discredit to the actors involved. It's like the spice record and the high vis record. I like about the same. Yeah. But it like, I couldn't put them on my list. Sure. Like the votes the coaches out. weren't there. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, I really, so this, I, I the numbers do don't work in your favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I yeah love the record. Anybody that likes anything that we just said in uh, of that ilk has to check the record out because they're especially there's a song. I think it's Trauma Bonds. No, that that one, like great. It's a great song. Oh, yeah, they're even a band that like. I mean, they definitely lean more like, you know, punk hardcore adjacent like, like eight like like you said like there's like an eighties influence, but like, you know, younger kids who who are getting like like drug church like. I could see them. Oh my King's God. Way. Yeah. Like, Oh, totally. Yeah. I hope they come over here. Cause that would be. Yeah. Fantastic. I think, I, I think that's the, I think that's the idea where they'll just, and I, I like, I, I also do in the same way that like so many of the bands that we were kind of talking about, whether it's like chat pile or whatever, like they just, 
work at their own pace. They don't feel like they need to participate in the sort of, you know, music industry trappings of, you know, where you have to do these certain things. And it's like, they're just like, yeah, we'll make ourselves available when we can. And we'll, you know, just take opportunities as they come. It's just so cool to see bands be able to exist like that and be able to be part of the ecosystem still. And then, you know, and then you could have Touche just tap you on the shoulder, be like, hey, you guys want to do a week with us? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> we tried to get them to play our our very, very uh, quickly announced and quick, you know, whatever. We did a, a, a very surprise London headliner and tried to get them on. And they were they were sweet, but they had already they were like they had tickets on sale for like them opening for terror like the week after. So oh, they do it. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that they have management now. They do. I was excited to see they're part of the uh, Rock Nation family there. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I caught this because Blaze randomly just put the, a picture of them or something in his stories. And I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, Blaze, are you managing them now? And he was like, what can I say? I like the hardcore or like the post hardcore. Whatever he said to me, I was like, there you go. I know. He, he dipped into my DMs when I had a uh, Graham, the vocalist on my podcast and then uh-huh. he was like it was like oh hey just pick them up i was like wow look at this some yeah. opportunities in the states there so yeah, yeah. Stuck to them. <clears throat> so that was uh that was my number two i will announce my number one record now and then loop back to you beautiful gentlemen my number one record of the year is this kind of surprised me but i just i had to double down on the fact that i'm like listen i listened to this record probably the most out of any record this year it is the holy fawn record called dimensional bleed I, I, it is just a per- perfect mood setting record. I love, I've loved the band ever since they started to release music. They're such an interesting band from Phoenix making this like dark, doomy, sing, scream stuff. But it's, uh, this record in particular, I, I never really care about songwriting stuff like when interviews or whatever where it's just like i want to know how songs are made like to a certain extent you know of course like people that you know the song explorer podcast like is interesting or whatever but i i I heard the singer articulate this in an interview where he basically said like i start off with like found noises where it's like i hear a certain thing or i hear like you know something on a keyboard or whatever and then we start to put like actual guitars and drums on top of that I just love that idea because I think it embody or it's able to help the band uh, write these songs that are just so uh, beautiful and epic. And yeah, I just, I cannot, I'm actually seeing them on Saturday for the second time. Cause I saw them open for deaf heaven when they were on that most recent tour. Um, yeah. They're just really, 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 really good. And I love the record so much. So yeah. that is my number one record. Holy right. Fawn dimensional bleed. Did you guys listen to it? I did not. Um, I need to. Yeah, I think I I did. They were on a the thrice drug church tour, I believe. Yes, yes, they yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and aren't they opening one of the? Is that what you're going on, to the, the thrice show? That is, yep, that is what I'm going to. So yeah, got it. Cool, Thank cool. Uh, yeah, I need to I need to actually sit down and listen to this record. There's so many because there's so much good music. I mean, I'm sure we're gonna have an honorable mentions conversation where we could just run through stuff or whatever. I'm sure maybe at the end of this, but yeah, there's just a lot. That there's a lot, yeah a lot. so it's like some stuff just i i kept meaning to check out but uh yeah i had to no. listen to Ho- rob harvilla talk about um <laughs> you know uh blur or something <laughs> totally I had, to, I had to listen to two other podcast people talk about how important these other songs were in the 90s i, just yeah. have, I still have to listen i'm still in the middle of listening about a two and a half hour podcast about the fable so i understand the Nice. I got to see that still. <sighs> uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You're listening to the Slash film, or no, sorry, the film cast. No, I know what you're listening this to. This is Blink Jack, this one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, my number one record, if you've been paying attention, you might have uh, figured it out by now, but it's the Chat Pile Mostly record. Uh, chat pile. Num- <laughs> number- wow, I-, I love that this is your number one record. My That's number awesome. one record. I could probably spin yarn for an hour about why, but I'll keep it short. So the record's called God's Country. Uh, I love how very uh, just bleak and apathetic that they love using just the, like the, the fact that God's Country. And it's just like when they were promoting it, it's like photo of like the shittiest exit off of a freeway in the middle of the U.S. with just nothing but chain stores and like fast food restaurants and you know whatever because that's literally what this country is every exit is just a taco bell a fucking motel six uh a mcdonald's 
and then you just start Anna, Anna, Anna yeah. fucking, you know, choose your own adventure truck stop, whether it's like loves or TA or whatever. Anyway, um, I, there's not a lot of bands that, that I, I, I love how original this sound is. It's a culmination of a lot of different sounds of a lot of different bands, but this is singularly the, them, you know, like knowing that, like hearing the corn influence, which they cop to, like sonically the guitar, the guitar sounds and things like that are very like early corn. But then vocally, it is so unhinged. It is like so wildly unhinged. Like I, I remember Clayton even comparing it to like swans in a lot of way, just like the very just I'm talking loud and I'm upset. Uh there is a <laughs> I hate to, you know, nothing frustrates me more than when people like make fun of how a vocalist sounds um, or anything like that. But Pitchfork did it like in their review said what it sounds like. And I can't unhear the comparison, um, which is Bobcat Goldthwait and Barney Gumbel from The Simpsons. And it's honestly so on point. It's crazy. Wow. But. Honestly, I, did you guys check out the two new songs that they randomly just dropped? I did on that film that they're scored. Yeah. Yeah. So like one song, his vocals sound like, like not to bring up Interpol again, like that's the only thing. But like when he's singing, singing, he sounds like in that band, it sounds like the vocalist of Interpol and it works so well. And then the second song is just a straight up country song with very funny lyrics. But like this band doesn't seem to give a shit about like anything other than just being themselves, which I find um just nice because you don't see a lot of that anymore and uh i I don't know i'm so into this band and i and like you're mentioning like it doesn't seem like they're going to tour very much like i mean they're a lot older um you know they just don't seem to have the drive to really want to do it but i hope that they do because uh videos of them playing live look really (laughs) pretty insane like yeah am i off base for saying it maybe not sonically but like the the vibe reminds me of drowning man which is like funny the song titles yeah the carefreeness of it yeah I, would, I could say that um i mean like you i mean you mentioned the song why which is like you know obviously a very direct co- uh, conversation but i mean like the you know the song pamela he wrote that song about uh the uh, the mom from friday the 13th yeah you know and like you listen to the lyrics and it's like holy shit well uh, i I also I, I can't help but think of if they if they did exist in the like early nineties like am rep scene with bands like Unsane and whatever playing shows with the Melvins and stuff like that. Like yeah. yeah. People people would absolutely lose their minds over this too and just be like, you know, I mean you, you could easily in some weird alternate dimension like them getting signed to a major label and like putting out one record and <laughs> than just being an independent band the rest of their life like they totally could have done that and i i also like too where it's like the flesner the record label that they're on is like completely you know they're they're on like their sixth press of that lp or whatever and it's just like you could tell that they were not into something like i I don't think anyone was and no and i like you like my first time hearing them you know was that portrayal of guilt split and i love their song on that it sounds it sounds like it sounds like early nirvana like so much like early Nirvana. It sounds like a song that would have been on insecticide or something like that. Yeah. Um, so huge, huge, just excitement for what this band is going to do. And if honestly, if they just, if they just didn't do anything else and they just gifted us <laughs> a lot of music this year, I'd be fine with it. You know? Yeah. I mean, the fact that the EP's collection came out on reptilian of all labels is like <laughs> super random, you know? Um, so yeah, this band rocks, uh, excited to see, what they do also i mean just shout out also the last track on the record being grimace smoking weed dot weed. JPEG. jpeg yeah that's <laughs> the best you you absolutely know that was obviously something that got sent in the band text chat but they're like what should we name the song obviously but, they, but like talk like lyrically like there's like yeah. like oh my god it's 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 out there. Uh, I want to also just throw out there because uh, I had the the pleasure of uh, interviewing the vocalist of the band who goes by Reagan Bush. Um, that's his stage name. Uh, he has a solo project called Randy Rules, uh, R U L Z, and his voice is gorgeous. He has like a very gorgeous oh. singing voice for like 
singer songwriter acoustic stuff. It's mind blowing. So Love like a lot of a lot of facets to this man. I um I'm I'm in. I'm in for the long haul. So that's my number one. <laughs> Love Joey, it. are we doing your number one? <clears throat> we are doing my number one. Here we go, baby. What do we uh, got? My, my number one record of the year is Pusha T. It's almost dry. Oh, I was. Well, I obviously there had to be some hip hop on your list. Otherwise, what are we doing here? This by far my most listened to record of the year. Um, is that because of your child? No, he was like, "Dad, let me let me get Pusha T on my playlist." I was like, "No, <laughs> the entire record's about cocaine." <laughs> and he R- the really is that that's we gotta wait one, we gotta wait one more year. So he was like. If I dunk myself at swim lessons, can I get a Pusha T song? And I was like, yes. So he's got a couple songs that are the least about cocaine okay. um, on his playlist. But I mean, I've <clears throat> I've been a, I've been a big fan of Clips for a long time. I think Hell ha- Hell Hath No Fury is one of the best hip hop records ever made. So I've always kind of followed Pusha T and what he's done. Um, the Daytona EP is great. And then this just like blew, blew me away. There was a review I saw of it where it was like, Pusha T needs to like get out of, you know, get out of his lane, like rap about something different besides cocaine. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, that's exactly what he should do. Like. He knows his subject matter. Like, rap yeah. about cocaine. Like, it's great. I mean, cocaine's yeah. not great. Stay away from drugs. I've never even seen cocaine. Uh, straight <laughs> edge. But the record's unbelievable. He's an incredible wordsmith. Like the lyrics are, I mean, it, it's so good. Um, there's a clips reunion on it, which is unbelievable. His, his brother malice who then went by no malice uh, is on this record as malice, which makes me think that maybe we'll get a clips, a clips record, but it's a song with that guy labyrinth. I think it's like, the, like who does all the euphoria stuff. Um, oh, okay. I mean, the song, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, I went and saw Pusha T uh, at my least favorite venue in Boston. Um, which the only two times I've ever been there. We'll on this. I was going to say, there sounds like there's a theme here. <laughs> uh, and it was like, I walked in, you know, when you'd go to like chain reaction and they'd be like, yeah, there's 900 people in here. And you're like, that's too many people. Yeah. This was the first time in a long time, especially with COVID where I walked into this room and it was like, this is unsafe. This is too many <laughs> people. Yeah. I'm going to wear a mask at this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like the sight lines were horrible. Like it was like what should have been just like, well, this is a huge bummer. And it was, and it ended up just being unbelievable. It was so much fun. That's um, awesome. He's great. Yeah. Beautiful. You should, uh, you should do some uh, shout outs for any honorable mentions that you would like to do. Let me pull up my list. Let's see. Um, the cave, new cave record was great. Yep. Um, I'll get you two Oreos in one second. Um, <laughs> I'd make that four. Uh, yeah, six. Oh, got it. Um, <laughs> have either of you listened to Namdi? No. Uh. Uh-uh. He's on Secretly Canadian. Um, for this record, he I don't know who did it, the previous records. Has a record called Please Have a Seat that came out this year. Um, I really like the new Barty Strange record, but this Namdi yeah. record was like similar to Barty's but weirder. Uh, and you know, was just got bumped today. Unfortunately, um, the new Wise Blood is fantastic. Oh, right. oh that is really good. Yeah. Um, I just wish I had more time with it. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably would have made my list. Um, and finally, the the new Denzel Curry LP was. I li- I, li- I listened to that and I good. very much enjoyed it. The song Walk In is stupid good. Hell yeah. Well, I think it was a pretty good year for music. It's like, yeah. After a rough couple of years, I think this year was. If we guys, we probably could have done a top 50, like we've done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jeremy? What do you got? Uh, some shout outs. Um, I need to just clear the air here just cause you know, we always, we always try to, to avoid the nepotism thing. Um, it's okay. There's a reason I did not mention the Soul Glow record. It's because I it, I got to put out the vinyl of that on uh, my sure. label, uh, but it did come out on Epitaph officially. Um, I'm very proud of this record. It's getting all the love it deserves. A lot of lot of top ten lists. A lot but of number ones number one. in there. Yeah, yeah, they got like a number. I, did, uh, I forget like number eleven today on the Fader. 
Uh, they're in the top 50 for Pitchfork. Um, this record fucking rules. Uh, it, I, I love Soul Glow so much, and I'm so proud of them. Um, the record is unbelievable. Uh, it's hard not including them on a list like this uh, because they deserve to be on there, but um, just for playing fair uh, yep. for, for listeners. Pre- that's, it's appreciate why, that. It's why Joey's never put 6131 records uh, uh, on his list. Uh, Shout out the Rat Tally record that came out this year. <laughs> Uh, um, um exactly so love soul glow some other honorable mentions though uh i think the always record is great um it's very it, solid. it feels like it kind of feels like b-sides from the last record but i really like that last record so i'm fine with it <laughs> um what else is there uh what else is there um <laughs> I'm a sucker for that band skinhead. It just makes me laugh. I it like it. Funny. It's, 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 it's fun to sort of, for me to cosplay as if I can relate to any of the lyrical content of skinhead. <laughs> um, it's, it's so aggressive and it's so not me, but I just, I love it. Um, I tell you, I'm, I, I think I respond, I posted about it or something like that. And Martine responded to me and, uh, and I was like, I was like, I forget what I said. I was like, I was like, I love this band, but please don't tell the singer that I like this band because I think he'd beat me up if he found out that I like this band. <laughs> <laughs> he just laughed really hard. You gotta, uh, you gotta have those aggressively. Yeah, you gotta have those things where it's I just got, like, oh. Real quick, one more quick thing that I forgot: the two yeah. Jimmy World singles that came out this year. Woo! Oh, okay. Yeah, they're outstanding. So good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, I, I would be mad if I didn't mention. Uh, have you guys listened to that Plains record? The so Katie I, from Waxahachie. I haven't. <laughs> Mm-mm, no, I haven't. it's very good. It's okay. very, I, this is one of those records like I didn't get it on vinyl until very recently. Had I had more time with it, it probably would have made my list. But uh, I mean, if you're a Waxahachie fan, you're you're in for this. But it's like it's it's really good. The, the blending of the two voices is is fantastic. It came out on Anti. Uh, so yeah, if uh, if you're a fan of Waxahachie, uh, check that record out. Um, I'm gonna probably. Well, as you probably list them off, Ray, there's probably going to be more. But oh, I agree with yeah. you. K- Cave in. That record's fantastic. So good. Yeah, um, barely missed my list, too. Yeah. All right, yeah. Ray, what do you got? I got, like I mentioned, that Anxious record. Really enjoyed that. The Beach House record. Love that. The Vane FM record. Oh, I know that, yeah, of course. The Vane record's great. Really good. Yeah. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, Piano. Flesh, Fleshwater. Yeah. It's the honestly no shots against Fleshwater. I just it didn't um I wanted to like it more than I did because everyone was basically just like, hey, it's vain except the soft stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, which it's a good it's an app description. Yeah. It just didn't capture me as much. Um Pianos Wake Up the Teeth released a new record that is very, very, very good. It just didn't I, I didn't spend as much time with it as the previous pianos record, so it didn't make my my top ten. Um Elder, all uh, the band from Sweden that's like proggy oh, baroness Sweden? types yeah 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 they are but they release their records on armageddon shop yeah. here in the states yeah 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 in your backyard joey um they just released a new record like maybe three weeks ago and so it it just it's amazing but i was like i just didn't have enough time with it like everything else that we've just been mentioning um i also from a hardcore perspective like that jelly pea smokes i think that bit is so good, really good. uh world of pleasure uh, they really like really vegan good. straight edge. I just can't. I love it so much. And from a straight edge perspective, the inclination LP, they finally released their yeah, first. That record's record. really good. Oh, and God. Joey, if you had not listened, this is a band. Like I listened to it and I was like, oh, this is Joey's. Like this has to be Joey on Joey's radar. Uh, that band Press Club. Have you ever listened to them? The record's called Endless Motion. They're from, I think they're from Sydney or whatever, Australia. Sort of. Um, yeah, they're really, really good. Kind of like, uh, I'm trying to compare them to like, I mean, I would say maybe a more aggressive version of the Beths. They got hooks. They're faster, more aggressive, but uh, I right, I'm going to figure I'm Yeah, gonna like you, would, can... you would like it. You would like it a lot. Um, so. Have you heard yeah. No Cure from Alabama? Dude, yeah. Super good. Very straight edge. Very, Very straight edge. edge. <laughs> yeah. They do a yeah. Firestorm cover that's like, like oh yeah yeah that's right they did they they released that no but they do a great job at it like it's it's a great cover and it sounds like it doesn't it's not a direct rip off of firestorm i was like and they released that on edge day didn't they yeah (laughs) no the band's really good 
Um, shout out yeah. uh, Nick Maggio for sending me. Here, <laughs> or just randomly send me like just vegan straight edge bands. That was my uh, Always, always got to have that in the rotation in some capacity. So, well, um, gentlemen, we did it in record time as we always do. And uh, under um, two hours. Uh, I know. Perfect. Yeah. Just only only a few minor edits I'll have to do in here. Thank you very much, Owen. Uh, Owen, needs, that. Owen needs Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'll make sure everybody can reach out to Joey Cahill and send him all of the Oreos. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, if you if you work for Oreos, I mean <laughs> Nabisco. Let's be honest. Okay. I don't know who owns Oreos. I know. That's, Oreos. Yeah. Oh, wait, <laughs> Oreos. Thank you, Owen. We appreciate that. Well. You guys are great. I love you as always. Bye. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks. See you. If you suck around to the very end, God bless. I appreciate you. I am taking next week off, but then we'll be back at it once uh, 2023 rolls around. And the guest for that particular episode is Todd Kowalski from Propagandi. And I was so thrilled when he just allowed me to, uh, you know, punish him over Instagram. I mean, honestly, obviously, you, you don't need to respond to messages on Instagram, but he did, and we connected, and it's been, it was such a great discussion. So, top of the year, Todd Kowalski, the illustrious and infamous bassist from Propagandi, he is on the show. But uh, next week, just to, you know, chill out and maybe uh, do some walks without stuff playing in your ear. So anyways, you do what you want, but I'm taking next week off. Until then, please be safe, everybody. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, I'm David Eagleman. I have a new podcast called Inner Cosmos on iHeart. I'm going to explore the relationship between our brains and our experiences by tackling unusual questions like, can we create new senses for humans? So join me weekly to uncover how your brain steers your behavior, your perception, and your reality. Listen to Inner Cosmos with David Eagleman on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The thing that I'm most nosy about is other people's finances. I just want to ask people, how much money do you make? And what have you figured out about money that the rest of us haven't? I'm Maya Lau, and this is Other People's Pockets, the show where I ask people about their money because salary transparency is important and because we can all learn something from other people's financial mistakes and money hacks. Other People's Pockets is a co-production of Pushkin Industries and Little Everywhere. Listen to Other People's Pockets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 